Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Elizabeth, and I am here to share information, tips, and ideas on how to live a happier and healthier life. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 10 most common financial mistakes so that you can avoid them and you can be on your path to peace, less stress, and financial freedom. Let's do it. All right, so number one, excessive and frivolous spending. So great fortunes are often lost one dollar at a time. So it might not seem like a big deal to buy up some of these things or to eat out or to do whatever you're doing with your money, but be careful because money and spending, it adds up. And the more that you spend and the more that you are spending above your means or close to your means, you are leaving little money to have for things that you might need for emergencies also to save for the future to invest for the future to invest in yourself and to grow so be careful don't just buy things to buy things be more mindful look into minimalism and seeing the benefits of that for your mental space and for yourself as a person look into how some products make you feel have you bought something lately and do you still use it do you regret that decision? I know something that has helped me is maybe I put an item in my Amazon cart and I just let it sit there for a little bit. And then if I keep thinking about it and it's still on there, and honestly, I'll do this, I'll even save a picture to my phone. Sometimes I'll keep it for months. I've kept things for years before and eventually I still like that thing and I'll buy it. Now, am I saying you have to wait that long? No, but just be mindful of your spending. Or even if you have kids, like if they're asking you for stuff, you don't have to get it for them. Just Take a second when you're maybe a little bit more calm and thinking more rationally, but just buying all the stuff just to buy this stuff is not helpful. And so be careful, pay yourself first and avoid frivolous and reckless spending. Remember that just $25 a week adds up to $1,300 a year. So if you spent $25 a week on dining out, and honestly, you probably spend a lot more than that, that is money that could be going to paying down debt or bills or to be helping you in your life. So just be mindful. I don't want you to be stressed out about it. I know there is a long spectrum of people who really, really need to reel back, but there's some people who are so afraid of spending money because they're very hyper conscientious and aware. So work on finding a middle ground and be mindful to never ending payments. So if you keep getting into debt or even these programs now where you can pay for a shirt in installments, like a t-shirt or a dress, like if you're in that situation and you have to do that, you probably shouldn't be buying that thing. You should be going to a thrift store. You should be using what you already have, looking for hand-me-downs, looking for something else, right? It is that buy now, pay later, and it can really come back to get you, especially with the 20% or more um, fees that if you are paying late. And a lot of times that's how companies make their money is they rely on people to not pay their payments on time. And that's really unfortunate. But if you have all these car payments, you have one for your, your spouse and one for you, and you have a payment for this and a payment for that and a payment, 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 payment you are going to be bogged down and it's going to be really hard to get ahead. So don't get caught up in debt. Try not to have too many never ending payments or reoccurring payments that you have every single month. Yes, there are some that you have to have, but really look closely. Do you have to have all of them? Is there anywhere you could cut back and what can you do moving forward? Living on borrowed money. This kind of goes along with number two, but try not to be in debt. And just borrowing all this money. I know the rich can leverage debt sometimes, but honestly, a lot of rich people, they don't leverage debt. There are a lot of people out there that don't and that are more risk averse. And so it's important to know that debt can really control you and can hurt you and it can hurt your life. And it's important to try to stay out of it. Buying a new car. Buying a new car, it's a depreciating asset. As soon as you drive it off the lot, the money goes down like the value of the car goes down it literally goes down as soon as you buy it so be careful yes you could buy a used car you could buy a fairly new car maybe three four five years old um so it's been driven a around a little bit the value's already gone down enough um it's not going to totally go down hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars by the time you have it um but it's also not a super clunker car i know some people are like well i don't want to just buy a $2,000 car that's like a total piece of crap, you know, um, but sometimes you should do that or you have to do that. And so find that middle ground. Try not to have payments. Sometimes you have to, but be really careful and cognizant and don't just think about what that monthly payment is because sometimes you're like, oh, it's only this amount a month, but for how long? 
and what are other things that could come up or what are your other goals in your life is your goal just to have a nice car okay well let's think long term what is that doing to your family situation? What is that doing to your financial situation? So be careful. Cars and transportation is one of the biggest wealth killers and money suckers. Financial mistake can be spending too much on a house. So right now, the economic times are different and you can definitely spend a lot on your house. But be careful and be mindful. Do you really need that much space? Do you really need to live in this location? Is there something that you can do? Um, yes, if you can make more money, great. I know there are so many factors into this and you want a nice situation for your family. You want to live in a good zip code, a good neighborhood, all that stuff. But really be careful. You don't want to be house poor and you want to make sure you're not spending yourself too thin. This is another area where people end up spending a lot of their paycheck and it really prevents them from building wealth, from traveling, from having fun, from being peaceful and doing other things financial mistake is living paycheck to paycheck. In June 2021, the U.S. household personal savings rate was about 9.4%. Many households may live paycheck to paycheck and an unforeseen problem can easily become a disaster for you. So I have a video on debt or if it's not posted yet, it will be soon. Um, and living paycheck to paycheck, it's not a fun way to live. If you live paycheck to paycheck or if you live paycheck to paycheck before, this can be a really challenging and stressful place to be. And so that's where living below your means, not having these extra car payments, not maybe choosing to have um, a car that isn't as nice or that isn't brand new, but that still works and still gets you there. A house that maybe is a smaller or um, in downsizing and saving you a little bit of extra money in taxes and maintenance fees, et cetera, or renting for a little bit longer if you need to. So be really mindful of what you're spending your money on. Um, sometimes we need to just make more money, but look at your current situation and see if there's a way that you could cut. And I know it's tempting to want to live like everybody else, but honestly, a lot of people, everybody else is stressed out and in debt and has a lot of financial burden. And so maybe I challenge you to think about it a little bit of a, in a little bit of a different way and try to give yourself that peace and that gift. Financial freedom, financial peace is a gift and a blessing. And I wish that for all of you. One is not investing for retirement. So even if you don't have a lot of money right now, please take a tiny bit, a tiny bit and save it for retirement. Pay off that debt, pay for pay it off, but save for retirement. You do not want to be old and having to work. You do not want to be old and not being able to do the things you want or take care of your kids or just stop working and enjoy your life, right? So pay yourself now. Pay for retirement now. I know that a lot of people are like, well, I'm not guaranteed to live my whole life. I'm not guaranteed to live forever. And yes, that's true. But what if you do, which you hopefully and probably will, you want to make sure you're taken care of. So really, really consider that and start looking into those 401ks, those Roth IRAs, and these programs that can help you out. And it can honestly help you save more money in taxes and reduce your tax goal income and all that stuff as well. So really check that out and don't wait too long. We all have seen how time is one of the most valuable assets, especially with wealth building. Starting earlier is going to help you. If you're older now, doesn't matter. Start today. Doesn't matter how old you are. To Yes, at a certain time or starting right when you could is the best time, but the second best time is right now. In debt, try not to borrow from your retirement accounts. So maybe you do already have your retirement accounts, but then you're in a lot of debt and you're going to try to use it. Try not to. It's really hard to take, um, get back that compounding effect. Um, sell things, downsize, sell your house, do whatever you need to do, but try not to touch those retirement accounts. And lastly, not having a plan. So if you don't have a plan, how are you going to reach your goals with anything? If I talk a lot about just achieving your dreams and going for what you want and being healthier and happier. But if you don't have a plan to get there, if you're trying to eat healthier and you don't have a plan, you don't have the right groceries, you don't have the right environment set up, it's going to be really hard to be healthier, right? If you're not exercising, if you're not planning that time into your day, it's really going to be hard. So you really have to be a critical thinker, a strategic thinker and figure out how you need to do these things in order to reach your goals and to be successful. Because financial freedom, it's an amazing place to be and it's something to strive for. So you need to create a plan, habits and a goals to get there.
Great, so I hope that was helpful to you. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, what else would you avoid? What do you avoid doing? Um, there are certain things that can help you, but there are things that can hurt you. I like to focus more on what can help you, but sometimes it's nice to know what to stay away from, or maybe you just don't even know. I know on my journey to financial independence and peace and building wealth, there were certain things that I just didn't think about or I hadn't heard. So maybe something was triggered for you in this video that you're like, oop, I need to go stop doing that or I need to tackle this or whatever, or or you're reaffirmed that you need to keep doing what you're doing. So um, definitely keep going. Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe if you want more videos like this. I also will be posting probably more motivational videos like how to keep going, um, some videos on your health and overall well-being because your health is affected by finance finances. That's why I'm talking about finances. I've just seen it really stress a lot of people out and I've been stressed out before um, about it. And so that's why I'm really passionate about sharing financial information and education with all of you. So Feel free to comment down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.